Hello and welcome back to the Hive's PCB Design with KiCad uh, series and welcome to part 4D. My name is Ben and I'll be walking you through this section as with all the others. Part 4 as a whole has been covering the entirety of the schematic creation. In this part 4D I'll be covering how to assign footprints to the symbols and importing symbols that you download from the internet. Um, creation of footprints won't be covered because you should almost really never have to do that. Um, and it's far more error prone than custom symbol creation, though I will point you towards how to do it if necessary, and more details about that creation process can be found in parts uh, 7b and 7c. Anyway, let's move on to footprints. So again, before we do anything else, just a reminder of the circuit that we're developing, this flashlight, um, and remember that the symbols here were done in draw.io rather than in KiCad. Uh, so the graphics might be slightly different than slightly different. And a reminder of the schematic as we ended it with part 4C, fully populated and connected. So we've got this fully connected schematic. Uh, now we need to add footprints to everything, or at least we need to assign footprints to all of the schematic, all of the symbols. So to do that, we're going to um, click this little icon here, or you can go to tools and assign footprints to open up the footprint assignment window. On the left is all of the footprint libraries, all the available footprint libraries. On the right, we have all of the footprints that are within the selected libraries, or if none are selected, all of the available footprints. Um, at the top, we have some filters that are used to reduce the list on the right there. The middle option, pin count, and the right option, libraries or selected library, is helpful. Um, pin count in particular is useful, um, but it can also be problematic um, either way. Um, and the middle section is all of the components that are in our schematic and any already assigned footprints. Um, the columns are a little bit confusing. The symbols are actually listed alphabetically by reference designator in the second column, with the leftmost column just being the number that it is in that list, which is kind of weird. Um, the third column is the symbol name itself, and the fourth column is the assigned footprint. Um, so we're going to go from the top here, from symbol number one, and then work our way down. So without clicking on a library on the left so that we're searching all of the libraries, let's filter for the battery holder part name, the BC2032. So if you've done that, you might notice that you have no footprints left. That means that we don't have a footprint available for that. So we're going to come back to the battery later, um, and we'll cover all of the rest of the footprints here. Um, so what are the other packages that we're using? So I obviously didn't remember either, but this is why we have a bill of materials, even though this doesn't have the bill portion of that. Um, and don't worry about memorizing this. I'll remind you as we kind of move through this section as well. Key point, though, is blinding, blindly using global footprints can leave you exposed to a number of potential issues. In particular, parts and suppliers or suppliers may say that it's using a standard footprint, but the data sheet is really the important part here, and that's really the only truth. And even then, sometimes they're not correct. They're not entirely correct. They think they're using a certain standard, but like theirs is slightly different. So it's really up to you as the designer to confirm the dimensions of your footprints and parts. Um, and failure to do so is really at your own risk. Um, as they say, assume and make an ass out of you and me. Um, much later on, I will. Once we've done the layout, I'll actually show you a method of confirming your footprint size, your footprints and your parts. Um, but it is a long way off from there. So, something to consider. As another aside, package nomenclature is absolutely the worst. Um, it's something you'll get familiar with as you design boards. There are just so many standards and so many classes and families, and the variations between some of them can be really small. It's really painful, and it can lead to a lot of unfortunate outcomes if you make assumptions, again, about these parts. Um, the data sheet's mechanical drawings are really the one and only truth for the parts package size. So definitely double check with those first and foremost, but you, and use a lot of caution when using general or generic or um, default or built-in libraries because they can be wrong or can be different from the part that you're actually using, which is part of the reason why requesting um, footprints for all of your specific parts, so all of the... Um, for instance, all of your ICs that have packages like this is a really good idea. So we're going to start with the 1206 package, which is a standard passives package. Um, 
this is one of those ones, and a lot of the passives, a lot of passives have standard um, standard packages, and you'll learn which ones are good to you can use the global libraries for, and which ones you can't. Um, but so what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, search for 1206 here. And if you're unsure which library to find the footprint in, or you know the exactly the footprint you need, the filter box up at the top is really the best way to limit your options. Um, the uh, middle filter is going to that I want to click on here is going to filter by the number of pins in the symbol. So if I in the middle section, if I click on one of those capacitors, there are two pins in that symbol. It'll filter down and only show me the um, the package. Sorry, the footprints that have two pads in them. So that can be really really valuable. Um, so type in 1206 into the filter box there, making sure the pin number filter is on, and you'll see a whole bunch of different options here on the right. Um, each footprint is labeled with what, what library it is on the left-hand side of the colon, and then on the right-hand side of the colon is the actual footprint name itself. So for the capacitors, which is what we're starting with here, we want to find something that says capacitor or C and then 1206. Similar for the resistor, we want something that says resistor or R and then 1206. So you're going to pick the component in the middle plane, in the middle pane that you're assigning a footprint to, and then double click the footprint itself that you're going to assign to it. So you can always view the footprint itself through this icon here if you to access the footprint viewer, from which you can also access its 3D model if you're confused or unsure about what the footprint actually looks like and double checking. So um, hopefully here you found the C underscore 1206 and the R underscore 1206 footprints in the capacitor SMD and the resistor SMD libraries respectively and assign them here. Um, if you didn't do that, now's your opportunity to do so. Um, notice that I actually chose the hand solder version of these. These use a slightly larger um, pad size, which supposedly makes it easier to hand solder. Generally, this is a pretty marginal change though, so your mileage may definitely vary here. Great, so uh, let's go ahead and now you can add these three footprints to their schematic components. Um, you can filter directly by the package name that I've given you here, so SOD128 for the Shockey diode, 1008 for the inductor, and the TSOT236 for our um, integrated circuit, our IC. Um, you can make an educated guess as to the correct option if you're unsure and given a couple of different options there. I would suggest pausing the video on your own before continuing. Great, so these are the, hopefully we found these models okay. They're listed here if you didn't. Um, note that uh, we're making a big assumption, particularly with the IC, that the built-in TSAT 236 is actually the correct, the same TSAT 236 that the package, that the um, IC's package actually is, but I'm ignoring that problem for right now. The switch is slightly more complex because there's not a standardized package for switches, um, or at least not really in the same way as ICs and for passive components are. Um, there are two switch specific libraries, button switch SMD and button switch uh, THT that we can hunt through and the filters make this much easier as well. Uh, note that they have all the switches, not just buttons. So you can click the switch, um, switch part in the middle first, that's uh, part number 11. And then we're gonna click on the button switch THT library on the left. We're looking for a six millimeter push button switch. And if you look on the right, there seem to be a couple of different uh, possibilities. So let's click on the footprint viewer which is up here on the left. Click on that icon there to take a look at them as we kind of scroll through them. So I picked one of these here. It only has two pins in it, so that's clearly not right. Um, this is one of those tricks I was mentioning about um, the pin number filter. Uh, this has two pins, but it actually has four pad needs actually four pads. But the four pads are all going to be electrically, two of them, two pairs are going to be electrically connected. Um, so it's really two pads, even though it's four legs. Um, anyway, this is clearly not right because that's the part. It needs four little through holes. So we're going to try another one here. Um, we can try this one as well. Um, it could be correct, but I'd be a bit worried about picking something that has a dedicated part number to it, which you can see at the last um, last little bits. It's a B3F-10XX. Um, Omron is the manufacturer in this part name. 
Uh, I'd be a little concerned about choosing this one because I just don't really know. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pick the generic one. Um, and I actually know that this one's the correct one. But if I was concerned, I can click this little button on the top in the left here to see a 3D view and it looks physically correct. So that's kind of a good indication that's probably right. Again, towards the very end here before we actually um, at the last 5C, um, we'll actually uh, find a way to actually verify these parts. Um, and you could always do that earlier as well if, once we get there. So we can go ahead and close this window and the footprint view to get back to the assignment window. Back to here, we're going to double click on that six millimeter um, push button part. You might be wondering what the other ones that are very similar are. H is actually for vertical height, which could be important for mechanical layout purposes, but um, for us it doesn't really matter. So just pick the one that doesn't have that at all. Cool. So for the battery cell, we actually have to make that one separately uh, because we don't, it's not included in the built-in, it's not in our, any of our, any of our available um, libraries. So we're gonna go ahead and click okay. You can also click the apply, save, schematic, and continue button. I think they're functionally identical. Um, back in the symbol window, we need to get, give the battery a footprint, but we can't just go into its properties and into the footprint browser again, like we did with the LEDs, because again, the footprint doesn't exist yet. So we actually need to open the footprint editor, which is the footprint version of the symbol editor we did in the last video, I believe. Um, and then we're going to either make it or add it. So that can be accessed through this icon here. Um, and the footprint editor looks like this. It's a, very similar to the symbol editor, and a lot of this will be similar too. On the left-hand side is all of our currently available footprints. Um, and we'll continue to kind of put off the discussion about availability until s far later in video uh, six and seven. Um, we need to make a, our own library because again, the libraries are actually all, all read only. Um, so you can make a new library and file new library. We're going to select the project scope again because we want to minimize our use of global libraries within our project. And again, we'll save it with the project name in the same project folder. So we've got a new empty library here. Um, there are actually two options for making footprints in KiCad. Um, we've got uh, completely from scratch, like a blank sheet of paper. It's good for distinctly non-standard components like uh, you know, battery holders, for instance. And there's also a wizard, which is uh, really good if you're, well, I don't want to say really good, but it's useful and really only useful if you're going to be using um, a standardized or pseudo standard footprint, um, something like ICs typically have, for instance. Um, it does require a little bit of math and some thought, however. Which one should we use? Um, normally, I would just go look for the footprint on Ultra Librarian or Snap Magic first, because um, that's usually the best place to just go and find a footprint. Um, but for this tutorial, we're actually going to look for the data sheet first and see what the footprint looks like and then check online. Um, so I actually had to hunt down this technical drawing for the battery holder on the manufacturer's website because the data, le data sheet link on DigiKey gave me their catalog, which is really not very helpful. Um, so this is what the technical drawing looks like, at least the top half. And you can see that we're actually given a suggested footprint for the PCB layout on the right, which is really nice. Um, so we could totally draw this. There's no problem with that and no problem. Um, I mean, there might be problems, but like it's definitely drawable, um, but we really don't have to. And really we shouldn't because again, footprint drawing, footprint generation is very error prone, especially if you're not like really good at it um, and you don't know how to read things. So um, we're generally speaking, you want to avoid it. And especially so, so we can check DigiKey, you can see that someone's actually already made the parts because they have a nice little link on them, on their sheet or on their page, excuse me. Um, and clicking on that brings us to the footprints and models page. Um, on the top, you get the manufacturer's 3D model first, generally. This is going to be a step file. Um, and then if we scroll down, we see a set of models from Ultra Librarian and then one from uh, Snapmagic. Great. So which one should we use? There's really no right or wrong answer here. Typically, it's going to be that both models are going to be totally sufficient um, and capture exactly the same information. Um, it's up to you to definitely confirm whichever part you use actually does match the thing that you need. Um, I'm going to use Snap Magic here because I like the footprint better. Better, I think it looks prettier, um, which is not a particularly good reason to choose it, but whatever. There's also a 3D model, which is nice. Um, so we're going to click on the Select Download Format button under the Snap Magic models and then you're going to select KiCad version 6 or later obviously if you're using uh, different software don't select KiCad 6 version 6 or later use the one that's appropriate for your software i also selected the 3d cad model because the 3d model uh, 3d view of the designed pcb is a nice thing to have 
And then it'll download a zip file. So unzip that somewhere accessible. There should be five files. There's a symbol library, a model footprint, a footprint model library, a step, step file, the 3D model, um, a link to a how to import web page, um, and a license text file. Now, if you forget how to do how to import, you can definitely click on that. They've got detailed instructions for literally everything, but I'll just show you how to do it here. So back in the footprint editor, you can right click on the new library and just select import footprint. You navigate to the unzipped mod file or model file, the footprint file, and then you just open it and voila, it pops up nicely in KiCad. Um, here's your chance to double check it. So the measure tool is under ins the inspect menu. Um, you can also click uh, shift control and M to open the measure tool and really double check all of the measurements. It's really a good idea to do so because it's like, silly things happen sometimes and it'll be really sad if you wait a week to get a bunch of your boards back and then they're all wrong because you made this mistake so easy to check annoying if you don't then make sure to save it and save the um the library with control s or just hit the save icon in the top left um you'll have to you have to uh, save it as a name and to a library specifically um, so you can rename it if you want. The default manufacturer underscore part number is a really effective and good name generally. Um, and make sure to save it in the library that you just generated. You can use the filter box in the bottom to actually filter for it and locate it specifically. Um, once you're back in the, once you've saved, you're back in the symbol window. We can now manually assign it like we did in the LEDs. You just open up the battery symbols properties. That's either right clicking and going to properties or left clicking on it and clicking E and then um, clicking the little three book icon to get into the footprint browser. You'll locate that footprint that we just imported um, by finding your library, which will be automatically added to the list of available libraries by, by creating it and making it a project specific library and then just double clicking to select the correct footprint, like so. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and click OK to exit out. Whew. So we've assigned everything a footprint. Um, I'm just gonna mention model, or sorry, values now, because values are can be relevant, can be important. They're not really, they're not electrically useful, but they are very useful schematically and for um, visually as well, for understanding what's going on. So to give a part a value, you can click on a part and hit the V key or go through the parts parts properties window like we just did. Um, I typically you give um, values to passive components in particular, so inductors, inductors, um, capacitors, resistors. Um, historically, again, no units are provided. Um, it should generally be obvious what unit you're talking about, but um, I think the real reason is actually that uh, symbols can't be generated in the text boxes here. Um, and so it's just easier to not have any units at all. Um, I'm giving this value or this resistor a value of 30 for 30 ohms here. Um, and I'm gonna do this very similarly for the inductor and for the two capacitors as well. 22U for the inductor and 1U for the cap input and 4.7U for the output cap. Same process, just click on the part and hit V. Uh, great, looks like this. I also gave the battery a value of three volts underscore 2032, which will hopefully make the schematic a little bit easier to read and understand later, um, cause that could be literally any kind of battery that we want. Um, so it's nice to, um, have that in there. It's another, that's actually a reason potentially to put a plus three V zero uh, net at the top instead of plus bat. Anyway, that sort of ends our part 4D of our video series on KiCad, which, uh, in which I covered assigning footprints, footprint libraries, importing pre-designed models, and adding part values. Um, as always, a PDF is available, uh, linked in the description or hosted on the Hive's website. In the next segment, part 4E, we'll wrap up the schematic capture portion of the series with a discussion of ERC and some miscellaneous schematic tools that you might want to be vaguely aware of. I will see you then.